Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, what I want to do today is to talk about a movement that you may see is, say, is punching above its weight. Uh, back in the early 2000s, Seiko uh, wanted to enter into the high horology market or they wanted to come out with some watches that were above the ones that they were making in terms of quality and price and everything else. And they came out with a caliber called the 4L. And the 4L was uh, two in particular, the 4L25 and the 4L75. And uh, they, it was a big flop, basically. And the reason it was a flop is because, not because the movement wasn't good, but the typical Seiko buyers just weren't, into spending a lot of money on a Seiko. Uh, that was why they got a Seiko in the first place. It was affordable. So Seiko decided, well, look, uh, we can, uh, we'll try and sell this to the, uh, to the Swiss. And so what they did, they went to the Swiss and before they did that though, they, they did some adjustments on it. So every aspect of the watch uh, had the same post and the same holes and everything that, was, that were on the 2892, on the ETA 2882. For example, uh, this is a, a, a dial, and there are these two little posts on the dial, let's see if you can see it better down here, called the feet. Well, the feet have to go into a certain place so you have your dial positioned correctly, and all kinds of other little details like that, and of course the, the width and the height had to be identical too. So they made this really good movement uh, that was based on this ETA uh, 2892. Everything was the same. And uh, here you have the up in the upper left is the back of it uh, with the rotor. And then in uh, lower uh, right, you can see it with the, uh, the date wheel on it. So uh, the quality of the one and the expense of the one by... Seiko was a bit higher, but in order to have a one made in um, uh, Switzerland, they had to get together with a Swiss watchmaker, which was so prod and so prod. So they took it. Then there were a lot. There was a lot of other <laughs> drama as uh, so prod was sold to a Chinese company, and Seiko didn't want the Chinese to have their <laughs> movement and so forth. So there were a lot of stuff like that was going on. Now the watch that Seiko tried to sell. Uh, was called the, uh, initially was the mechanical uh, 4L25. And this watch was uh, uh, the Sara 005. This watch was a nice watch. But like I said, the Seiko buyers, oh, we're not going to pay that much for a Seiko <laughs> because they had been getting them for a much lower price. And so this is why off they went to, they became the Soprod A10. And the A10 was for alternate to the uh, 2892-A2, not as a clone, but rather to, you could fit all of the same fittings that you'd use with the uh, 2892. Now, here are some that either have or are currently using what is the A10 or the newer name that uh, Soprod gave to it, the M100. Uh, the Eterna Contiki, uh, that the, the up in the upper low, uh, left, the Junhans Meister Classics, the Sin T1. Now, the Sin T1 isn't used anymore. In fact, a lot, most of these used it at one time, and then they went back either to an ETA or uh, to a Salida, which was a clone of an ETA 2892. Uh, Steinhardt Ocean Titanic 500. Premium had the uh, A, A10 in it, the lesser ones didn't. Now, one of the things that some complaints came up because Soprod A10 wasn't doing too well from the Steinhardt uh, because there were no adjustments <laughs> that were made. Uh, so anyway, but it was otherwise, it was performed quite well. Um, the Millicron uh, by, oh boy, um, Merlilu, Enamel. This was one by uh, a company called Millicron. Now they use the M100 
And it's like $1,900 for a watch with a really good uh, movement in it. The same thing with JS watches. JS watches is a little watch company in uh, Iceland. And for their Friesland uh, model, they used it as well. Now, they have gone not back to ETA, but over to Salida simply because of prices and costs and so on and so forth. And Salida was indeed, like I said, it was a 2892 clone, whereas the um, Soprod A10 wasn't. This was this was basically uh, a 4L Ibosch, Ibosch in a Swiss movement. Okay, well, anyway, so this is, uh, by the way, too, this is the second version of this. And the reason I had to make a second version was on the first version, I had featured the Christian Vanderclaw, and the, the movement in here was called the CVDK 1068. Well, the that was the whole movement, which included the Christian Vanderclaw uh, moon phase. Well, the, most of the movement, though, was a Soprod A10 at one time, but then they changed it, naturally, when I got it, and it is now a 2892. I don't think they're making a watch anymore, this particular model, uh, so it doesn't matter that much, but I don't like to have any inaccurate uh, information here. Listen, love to hear your opinion, and uh, until, and this is an invitation to subscribe if you like. Till next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Society, the art and science of watch collection. Thank you.